Hi everyone, in this video we're going to represent plane curves as vector valued functions. Let's start by doing some examples. So our first example uh, is a simple one. Uh, we have the line y equals x plus 9. So this is a straight line and the question is to represent as a vector valued function. So a is a vector valued function. All right, let's go ahead and work it out. So solution. So this one's actually pretty easy. Um, one thing you can usually do, uh, pretty much almost always, is you start by letting x be equal to t. Make a substitution. So x is t. Now just plug in your t into your y value, into your formula for y. So y is equal to t plus 9. So what we've done is we've created uh, parametric equations for this line. So now what we do is we use the formula for a vector valued function. You can think of a vector valued function as the x component, which is x of t i hat plus y of t j hat. You can always do that. And then you simply replace uh, x of t with t. So we get t i hat plus t plus 9 j hat. And that's it. We've taken this plane curve and we've represented it as a vector valued function. Does it get harder? Absolutely. Let's do another one, b. Let's say we have one more easy one, y equals 3 minus x squared. So let's work this one out. So again, as before, um, we can simply let x be equal to t. And then so y is equal to, uh, again, 3 minus t squared. And writing our answer down, we have our vector value, valued function. This is going to be, uh, let's see, so x is t, so it's t i hat plus, and then y is 3 minus t squared, so parentheses, 3 minus t squared, j hat. So there's, there's our vector valued function. All right, let's raise the level of difficulty, right? Let's, let's do something harder. So c, how about x squared plus y squared equals 64? Okay, so this is, this is a circle. So whenever you want to parameterize a circle, um, you can always just use sine and cosine. If you think about it, the unit circle is parameterized by cosine t and sine t, right? Every point on the unit circle is of the form cosine t comma sine t. So the unit circle has radius 1, so r here is 1. So every point on a circle of radius r can be written as x equals r cosine t, assuming, assuming the center is the origin, and r equals sine t. So now what we do is we just find our r. So our, our, our r here is uh, 8, right? Because the radius is 8. Uh, r is the square root of 64. So we end up with x equals 8 cosine t, y equals 8 sine t. And now we can write our answer down uh, as a vector valued function. So r of t, this is going to be uh, 8 cosine t plus, oh, i hat, plus 8 sine t j hat. And that worked out. Okay, so there is our vector valued function. So again, whenever you have a circle centered at the origin, you can just use these parametric equations and then convert that to a vector valued function. Let's do another one. Let's keep going. So how about this one, d? Uh, another easy one, x squared plus y squared equals 100. So again, we have another circle. And again, the center is the origin, right? The center is the origin, so solution. So r here is 10, right? That's the square root of 100. So using our formula, we get x equals 10 cosine t and y equals 10 sine t. So then r of t is going to be x, so it's going to be 10 cosine t. I'm going to put this in parentheses just because it looks better. Um, it just it looks a little bit better. Plus, uh, and then y, which is 10 sine t times j hat. So there's, there's our other one. There's our other one. Let's do another one. One more, one more. Let's change up the center. Say we have um, x minus 2 squared plus 
y plus 1 squared, oh, let's go nuts, uh, equals 4. Let's keep the radius simple. So now we have a circle. So what you can do here, uh, there's a trick, uh, there's a trick. So basically you know um, that the radius here is 2, because right, that's the square root of 4. And so you know you normally would use uh, r cosine t and r sine t. So just set this piece here to r cosine t and set this piece here to r sine t. Right? So we would have, oh, and r here is 2. So we would have 2 cosine t equal to x minus 2. And then over here uh, with the second piece, we have 2 sine t equals y plus 1. So why am I doing it? Why am I doing this? Well, because check this out. If you if you actually put a two cosine t here, and then you put a two sine t here here, here and you square them, something beautiful happens, right? You get you get four cosine squared t plus four sine squared t. Then you can pull out the four, so you get cosine squared t plus sine squared t. And that's equal to 1 because you get 4 times 1, which is 4. It's equal to 4, sorry, which is 4. So it checks, right? So it checks. So you just, you just make this uh, uh, 2 cosine t and 2 sine t and just make it, make it equal 4. And so that will always work. And then you just solve this for x. So x is 2 plus 2 cosine t. Solve this one for y. y equals uh, 1 plus 2 sine t. And then now we can write down our, our vector valued function. So it would be r of t. So it's x. So it's 2 plus 2 cosine t i hat plus, and then our y is 1 plus 2 sine t j hat. And that would be our vector valued function. You could come up with a formula, right? Um, notice this is the, um, let me go back up here so we can see it. Oh, I messed up. Uh, this is a minus, right? This is a minus here. So you could come up with a formula. Uh, it's 2, negative 1, right? That's the center. So you'll notice the center is 2, negative 1, and it's right here. It's hk. So a formula for a circle uh, centered at hk with radius r would be x equals h plus r cosine t, y equals k, plus r sine t. So these, this will always give you the parametric equations for a circle uh, centered at hk. And then you can just use that to get your vector valued function. So I hope this video has been helpful. That's it.